We bless the Lord for another opportunity to be able to come into his presence, come and worship him, sing, praise his name, adore him, dance before him. It's marvelous. Amen. Most of the time, a lot of people wish they have that opportunity. But where they find themselves, They are not able to identify themselves with Christ. But thanks be to God that we are able to identify ourselves with Christ. And we are able to say that we are children of God. Amen. Tonight, okay, pastor has traveled. Pastor and pastor George have traveled. They've gone to Kenya, specifically Nairobi to be able to minister the word of God to the people over there too. Amen. So we are praying for traveling mercies. And we are praying that God will take them there safely and the Holy Spirit will be mighty with them so that whatever they go and do there, the people will experience the power of God. The miracles of God will be shown to them. And they will also come to believe on the name of Jesus. If you believe that, say a big amen. Tonight, I just want to share a very simple message with you. I don't think I'll take more than 15 minutes, then we will pray. The title of the message is, Love More, Judge Less. Love More, Judge Less. Amen. Please, let's turn our Bibles to Proverbs chapter 10, verse 12. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 12. You want to read Proverbs chapter 10, verse 12. It says that hatred stirred up strife, but love covereth all sins. Amen. Hatred stirred up strife, but love covereth all sins. Hallelujah. Some version says that love covers a multitude of wrong. Amen. When we talk about love, when we talk about charity, which is the same as love, what are we talking about? We are talking about being able to feel for your neighbor. Being able to identify with your neighbor. Amen. So when we are saying that your love should cover a lot of sins or a lot of wrong, all we want to say is that you should be able to make more excuses for people when they go wrong so that you'll be able to cover a lot of wrong that they do. Hallelujah. We are not saying that condone with the wrong that people do. Or else you'll be conniving with them to do wrong. But we are saying that sometimes make excuses for them so that you'll be able to cover a lot of wrong that they do. Bible is telling us that when we love, we are able to make excuses for our neighbor or for our friends. Most often than not, when you stand to look at the things that other people do. You only see the end of what they have done. So you only see their mistakes. Hallelujah. Please, are you here with me? You only see their mistakes from far. And you see that. Hey, sister, wait, pa. Say they know you are jashios. I know a bomb, pa. And it turns like I see a bomb. Eh? Now, obi a cry, you didn't want to them. Say they are all team, team, we. Me, she, they are why you did and you're not boy, boy, or be a name, no ma, Kesia, Kesia, why a BSC. Are you here with me? We are quick to look at it that way and to say that that sister should be condemned or should be stoned to death. Hallelujah. But Bible is telling us that when we move a step further to love that sister or that brother, we will be able to cover a multitude of wrongs. Because most often than not, sometimes you don't know 
but that sister might already be feeling guilty for what he or she has done. Hallelujah. And that sister might be feeling condemned. That person's conscience is condemning him or her. And the devil is also the accuser of the brethren. So the devil is also accusing this Christian sister. And that sister is having a lot of burden on his heart. And does not know what to do. But when you stand from afar and you begin to judge the sister, all you are doing is sometimes you are handing that sister over to the devil to destroy him or her. But the Bible says that we should rather show love we should rather show charity to this sister or brother. Bible makes us understand that if a sister or a brother is caught in an act of wrong, we who are standing, we should go and hold that sister's hand and lift that sister or that brother up. Hallelujah. So that we'll be able to restore that person to the faith. So that we don't give the place for the devil to do what? Drive that sister from the church. Amen. This tonight, I just want us to love more and to judge less. Amen. Most of the time, we see the mistakes of people, but we don't see their pain. We don't see their hurt. We don't even see their struggles. Hallelujah. Sometimes the, 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 the corner that the person or the corner or the situation that the person found him or herself. Before that person fell into that act of sin, you are not there to see it. You are not there to to know what that person was going through. But all that God is expecting of us is that when we hear that a brother has fallen into sin or a sister has fallen into sin, we should go to that sister and restore that sister. We should go to that brother and restore that brother. So that we ourselves are not caught in the same act of sin. Amen. When we don't see that the pain that sister or that brother is going through, most often God sees it. And sometimes when we stand to condemn, God stands to show mercy. Hallelujah. And sometimes we are even surprised when we see that God is showing you mercy to such a person. Amen. Because for what the person actually did, that person actually needed to be stoned to death. But when we see God show mercy, it's because that sometimes the people have repented. The people have themselves seen that what they have done is wrong and that they need the Lord to save them. Hallelujah. So sometimes they go to God and they go and and confess their sins to God, they go and tell God that they are weak, so God should restore them. And the the Lord our God is not there to just punish people. So when God sees that this sister or this brother has repented, God also goes to that extent of showing mercy to the brother or the sister. Amen. And when God shows mercy, that is when the people themselves get repented and are being saved. Amen. So tonight, I came to encourage you, even before you can get a sinner converted to come and know Christ, you should be able to show love to that sinner. If in your mind, you have condemned the sinner already, and you have condemned the sinner to hellfire, how are you going to go the long way to go to that sister or that brother and tell the person that God loves you, so repent from your sins? Or else you will die and go to hell. But if we don't go to the state of showing love, then all the people that are getting lost in our area, especially even in our own families, they will get lost and go to hell while we sit down and just condemn and judge them. Amen. But let us also know that judgment is not what God has called a Christian to do. You are not called to judge people. Amen. Just as you are not con- called to condone with evil, you are not called to judge people. You are called to show love. You are called to show the mercy of God and the grace of God to your sister or your brother. Hallelujah. So from henceforth, God has called us to show grace, to show mercy, to be able to extend love to our brother or our sister so that when they go wrong, 
we will be able to restore them. In the first place, if you don't show love and your brother or your sister goes wrong, it is even difficult for you to walk to that brother or that sister. Are you getting it? To go and tell that brother or that sister that my sister, what you are doing will not take you to heaven. So please repent and change your mind. But if we live in love as a family, as a church, and every day we show love one to another, it will be very easy for me to walk to you when you are doing the wrong thing, to come to you and say that my sister, please, this thing you are doing is not good for you. It is not good for you because it's not going to help you grow as a Christian. Hallelujah. But when we stand at a far distance and we are not showing love one to another, then we will not be able to correct one another. We will not be able to um, try to, we will not be able to go to one another and try to tell the person to go the right way when the person is not going the right way. Amen. So tonight, all that I came to tell you is that don't be a judge of your brother or your sister, but rather love your brother or your sister and and show mercy to your brother or your sister because we all deserve the mercy of God. Bible says that God says that I will show mercy to whom I want to show mercy and I will give grace to whom I want to give grace. Do you know that sometimes when somebody does something, you think that thing is so grievous that that person should not be forgiven. But when you do the same thing, you just feel like, oh God, have mercy on me. I am a sinner condemned to death. God, please show me mercy. Are you here with me? Just like you, 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 you want to be shown mercy yourself. Let that same thing move you for you to be able to show mercy to your brother. When we love more and we don't judge, we are able to become intercessors. Tell your friend you'll be able to become an intercessor. Yes, you'll be able to become an intercessor. You'll be able to stand in for your family members who do not know Christ. Sometimes in our families, there are some people, almost some sometimes you know the way they live their life. It's Kantan Cross. And everybody has labeled them in their family that as for Uncle B, hey, not someone yet cry, and for us, someone Uncle B. So, but if we love more, though Uncle B, not someone yet, you will be able to become an intercessor for that uncle. Hallelujah. Because you'll be able to show that uncle the love of God. Sometimes people behave the way they do because they have not experienced the love of God. Listen, when you experience the love of God, you will change. When you experience the love of God, everything about you becomes different. When Zacchaeus experienced the love of God, when Jesus went into Zacchaeus' house and said, Today I am dining with you. You just wanted to see me, but I have brought salvation to your home. Zacchaeus' life changed. Zacchaeus just stood up and said, Jesus, me, everybody who have taken something from, I restore it fourfold. Let him take it. And if by some means I have been, I have taken something from somebody that does not belong to me, I restore it back to the person. The love of God changes a man. The love of God causes your life to change. Hallelujah. Bible says that whilst we were yet sinners, God sent his only begotten son to die for us. God was not waiting for us to change before he, we what? Before he comes to our aid. No. If you are waiting for that brother, that uncle, that sister, that mother, that father, that cousin to change before you show that person God's love or before you preach the word of God to that person, then please, you might never do it. Hallelujah. But we are called to be intercessors. We are called to stand in the gap. Bible says that I sought for a man to stand in the gap, to pray, to lift up a prayer for the nation, for the people. So God is looking up to you and he's looking up to me. Hallelujah. But if we make ourselves a high court judge and we sit down and we just want to judge all the people around us, by our own standards, and sometimes not even by the standards of the Bible, then nobody will be saved. Amen. So God is calling on us this evening that we should love more. We should tend to love. 
you should tend to show the love of God, the compassion of God, the love that moved God to give his only begotten son to a sinful world, to a world that was ready to kill his son and to destroy his son, not knowing that, they themselves not knowing that killing even his son is what is going to bring them salvation. Hallelujah. So this is what God is expecting of us, to stand as Christians and to show his love to our family members, to our community, at our workplace. We should show love. Sometimes when you find out that at your workplace, somebody is being marginalized just because you know the person has a certain behavior in court or the person does not know Christ and is living his life in a certain way. You can draw close to that person by showing the love of God, by trying to cover up or make excuses for the person's behavior so that you'll be able to move closer to that person and minister the word of God to that person. Hallelujah! And when we do that, that is when we can win people to Christ. Because it is not easy to win the world to Christ. It is the love of God that can touch the heart of a, a man who is full of adultery, a man who is full of fornication, a man who is full of lies, a man who is full of mischief. Hallelujah. It is only the love of God that can melt that stony heart. Hallelujah. And draw that person closer to God so that that person will come and experience the love of God and repent and change and hand his life over to Christ. Amen. So tonight, I pray that God will give us the grace that we will be able to love, that we will become intercessors, that the love of God will move us on our knees to be able to pray. Sometimes praying for our father, praying for our mother, our parents. Sometimes you should not just judge your father or judge your mother because of a certain behavior or a certain lifestyle they are in, but you will be moved to your knees by the love of God, and you start praying for them, interceding for them, so that the Lord will give you the right word to speak at the right time, that when you open your mouth to speak, your mother's heart will melt, your father's heart will melt, because of the power of the Holy Spirit backing your word, hallelujah, because you have done it on your knees, and you did it in love, and God saw it, and God knew that this mother, this father, has to change for the better so that the family will become a happy one in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Tonight, I just came to exalt you. Just love. Let your heart be filled with love. Just don't always look for the wrong that people do or look for the wrong part of other people, but be filled with love. Sometimes it amazes me. There's a man in the Bible when God says that he is a man after his heart and a man that he loves, it amazes me. A man like David who, who took somebody's wife and killed the person and a whole lot of things. And sometimes it amazes me when God says, this is a man after my own heart. Sometimes all that we have to know is that it is the love of God that can change. Amen. And sometimes, too, one thing you should also know is that sometimes the people themselves want to change, but they don't know how. And because they don't know how, the devil make them feel like there is no way out. So just live your life that way. Are you here with me? Yes. But I want to encourage you. We can love the people. We can love the people in our community. We can love the people in our family. The people at our workplace. And when we love them and we begin to pray for them. And we begin to intercede for them. When we move to them to speak to them about the word of God. They will change. The word of God will make an impact over their lives. Because every man has a conscience. And when that conscience is touched by the word of God. That man or that woman. It ceases to remain the same. Amen. When David sinned. He, 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 he hid everything that he did and covered it so well that nobody will know. But God had seen it. Hallelujah. God has seen the things that the people in our area or in our community are doing. 
the people in our family, at our workplace. God has seen it. God knows it. God knows the sin that they are in. God knows the sin that they are struggling with. God has seen it all. But God is waiting for you and I to make the move. Amen. When Nathan went and told David what he had done, he was pricked with his heart. He was pricked inside his heart. And he knew that he had to repent because what he has done was evil in the sight of God. So most of the time, sometimes the people don't even know that what they are doing is evil. But when we move to them and we speak to them and we advise them with the word of God, we preach the word of God to them, the Holy Spirit will convict them. Amen. The Holy Spirit will speak to their heart. Every man has a conscience. And the Holy Spirit will touch their conscience. The Holy Spirit will touch them. The power of God will touch them. And when they are touched by the Spirit of God, they will have no other choice but to change, but to hand over their lives to Christ. But you and I have to make the move. Hallelujah. And we have to make the move, being moved by the love of Christ. Not just going to them to tell them the sins they, they have just committed, but also going to them to share the love of God with them. Hallelujah. And to let them know that God is waiting for them with arms wide open to receive them into his kingdom. Amen. And to give them a place to, to be able to touch them and change them. God, is, God loves them just the way they are. And that God is with his arms open, wants them to come so that he will give them a better future, a better life than the one they are living. Hallelujah. So that their life will be changed. Tonight, may the Lord give us the grace. May he give us the power. May he give us the anointing. I know most of us want to win our communities to Christ, but we can do it when we allow the love of God to fill our hearts. When we love more, when our hearts are filled with the love of God for the sinner, for the dying soul, so that we will be able to speak to them the word of God and change them and bring them to Christ. There was a certain man in England. I've forgotten his name. They said that this man was in prison and he was going to be executed. And they asked him whether he needed a pastor or a preacher to speak to him. Then he said no. Then they asked him why. He said that if the Christ or the Jesus the Christians preach is really true, that he is truly who he is, he, if he was a preacher and the whole of England was covered with broken glasses, he would crawl on his knees to go to every house, begging people to change and give their life to Christ. But he doesn't believe that the Jesus that they are preaching is real because he doesn't believe the preachers themselves believe what they are preaching. Sometimes the devil wants us to think that the Jesus we know is not who, who he truly says he is. But I want to encourage each and every one of us. Our God has not changed. He is all powerful. He is who he is. He didn't remain in the grave. When he died on the third day, he arose from the grave. And he has the power to save. Amen. And so, we should go out there knowing that the Christ that we are preaching, he is not a virtual Christ. He is a real Christ. Hallelujah. And he really lives. And he exists. And he is the one who will be coming again in glory to judge the living and the dead. Amen. So, we should be moved with that conviction and to show the love of Christ to our world. So that we'll be able to change our world and be able to bring our world to the saving knowledge of Christ. I pray tonight that God will give us the grace not to judge more, but to judge less and to rather love more. And that our love will cause us to bring the multitude that are dying to the saving knowledge of Christ. May the Lord bless us. May he keep us. May he give us the grace to move by this word. So that we'll be able to change our dying well to come to know Christ. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Please may we be on our feet. We want to pray. We want to pray and we want to ask God to give us the grace. To first of all, first of all, fill us with his love. His grace. His mercy. Because if we are not 
ourselves filled with the love of God. If we ourselves are not loved by God, we can't show the love of God to the dying world. Hallelujah. But we are praying that God should cause his love to fill our heart, to fill our mind, to fill our soul. We are asking God that he should cause us to be filled with his love, that we should know that he loves us. He, we are his own. We belong to him. We belong to no other, but we belong to Christ. Hallelujah. And that we are for Christ. We are his. And his love should fill our heart in the mighty name of Jesus. Please lift up your voice and just begin to pray. Pray. Just speak to God. Tell him that fill me with your love, oh God. Father, let me know that I am loved by you. Let me know that you came because of me. If it was left with only me in the world, you would have still died for me. If I was the only sinner that lived on the surface of the earth, you would have still died for me. You would have still come from heaven, be born in a manger, grow, and still go to the cross and die for me and save me. So Lord, fill me with your love. Let me know that you love me. Let your love surround me. Let me be enveloped in your love. In the mighty name of Jesus, Ye kapando lo bo shoka tanda la ba 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 e masata tanda ga tanda lo bo shoka paya e bazoto lo bo shende de 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 bo shaka paya e mandori abaka tanda la ba 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 e maya pando lo bo lo bo shaka tanda lo bo lo bo lo bo lo bo e matoro ya tanda ba 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 e kipanda la ba 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 e maya ga tanda lo 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 bo shende de 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 e masoto ya ga tanda la 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 Father, fill us with your love, oh God. Let us live our life knowing that you love us. And that, Father, we are your own. We are your cherished possession, oh God. Let us live our life knowing that we are loved by you. We are no ordinary people. We are people bought by the blood of Jesus. The blood of your only son, Jesus. We are the cherished possession of Christ. We are saved by grace uh, and we are saved by the love of God uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. In Masotoria Katanda Ria Katapaya, in Masatan Dorobororo Reka Panda Rabaraba, in Zonde Reki Pandoria Kataya Kapaya, in Masotoria Katanda Rezataya, in Mantorobororo Reke Tende. We are who we are by the grace of God and by the love of God because you have bestowed your love on us. That is why we have not been condemned. That is why we have not been destroyed uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, Father, we give you the praise. In my soketaya gataya boa, a razakatandoria gatapaya, a randorororororororo, a centelia getapenda, a rosotoria gataya, in toria basataya, because of your long suffering with us. Uh, that is why we have not been destroyed, uh, because of your love, oh God. Uh, that is why we have not been destroyed. That is why we are who we are. Because of your grace, oh God, we give you the praise. We err in many ways, oh God. We go wrong in many ways. Sometimes, oh God, we go blindly against your word. But yes, so you have mercy on us. Yes, so you show us your love. That is why we are standing. That is why we are so Christians. Therefore, we pray, oh God, let your love fill our hearts and overflow within our hearts. In the mighty name of Jesus, continue to pray and tell God, the Father, let this love flow from my heart to my neighbor. Let me be able to show love to my neighbor. Let me not always be looking for the wrong things that people are doing. But let me be able to see good in others. Let me be able to show love to my neighbor. Let me be moved by the love of God towards my neighbor. In the mighty name of Jesus, continue to pray. 
as I go to we all falter in many ways, uh, but the grace of God still keeps us standing. Uh, so you want to pray, you want to say that God, uh, when I am standing by your grace, uh, let me be able to lift up a brother or a sister who falls from the same grace uh, so that I may not fall by that same thing. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, let me be able to lift give a brother or a sister a helping hand uh, when they are down, uh, when they are not in their strong moment, uh, let me be able to lift them up uh, by the same grace that you give me uh, and let me be able to show mercy uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, just continue to pray uh, Rapapaya, <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>